Hi, Miss Washington. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you so much. Okay. If you have time, I have a few questions that I'd love to ask you. Oh, sure. And feel free to call me Harriet. How do you make complicated scientific topics and medical topics simple, but not simpler to a broad audience? And do you face any challenges in that process? Translating scientific knowledge to lay people accurately and comprehensively is um, a challenge, but I try to do more than that, um, which makes it even more complicated because I'm not just imparting information about science. I'm helping people evaluate the ethos, you know, the morality of science, whether we're doing things, whether, whether we should be doing the things that we're doing and why. Very often, journalists make the mistake of taking shortcuts and you'll find reporting uh, only part of an article. And that's a problem because part of the article that is highlighted at the beginning, whether you're talking about a medical journal or a journalistic uh, portrayal, is typically that that pertains to the majority of people. In this country, it's typically that which pertains to white people, people of means. If you're not able to, or if you choose not to skirt the fine print in the article and the nuances, you're going to miss a lot of things that are very important to people who are not mainstream. And that's a really important thing to do, a very important part of translating that often gets neglected. You showcase a lot of stories that are ignored by the canon, quote unquote. Um, and by doing so, you rectify our understanding of history. So especially for these stories that have not been previously documented, how do you unearth them? Where do you find your sources? I spent a lot of time, more time than I want to remember, in the basement of the Countway Library at Harvard. In the basement was where you found 19th century medical journals. And going through those, I found so much material that had not been included in the history of medicine texts, things people didn't know about. You've, there's a treasure trove, but no one had actually looked for it. Several cases where I looked at original journals and found out the language was not what had been reproduced. Remember that despite the uh, kind of intellectual apartheid in this country, um, African-American scientists and physicians have their own lore, have their own um, body of work that is often marginalized or ignored. Looking at that can be extremely edifying. Um, their work is not of lower quality. It's not more diffuse. It simply has been segregated from the main canon. But if you look in that, that work, you're going to find a lot of information and more to, the, more to the point, you're going to find a lot of new directions for research. I was very curious to know what motivates you when reading these books and collecting sources, what motivates you throughout your process? When I wanted to become a doctor, I was dissuaded from it. I was told there are no black women doctors, not, it's not realistic. There are still medical schools that did not accept applications from black people. And um, at 17 years old, I let myself be discouraged. I never want anyone to have that experience again. And I know that a very powerful fiction has grown up around African-Americans in science and medicine. It's very powerful. And the canon of the history of medicine has supported that. Who can be a scientist? Who can be a physician? Messages about that are not merit-based. You know, people are told that um, Black people are constitutionally ill-equipped, not intellectual enough. Basically, these, this kind of mythology that cuts people off from their dreams is something that I wanted to attack and dismantle. And everything I do has been powered by that. That's very inspiring to hear. And not just as me, but I'm sure there's plenty of other students around the world who are inspired and very thankful for you doing this work so that we don't, I guess people of color don't have to be um, discouraged going into such mm -hmm. fields. So thank you for all that you do.